Hi you guys, my name is Ashley, aka Alchemist Negra, and this is my first blog post. I'm kind of wet, <laughs> because I just um, washed my hair. But um, regardless of that, I'm making my first video on Nate Parker, which is weird. Cause it's like, why would you make your first video about Nate Parker? And you'd probably say that just because of, like, all of the controversy that's going on about him. So, like, as you know, Nate Parker is the um, director and he's an actor um, in his own movie called Birth of a Nation. Birth of a Nation is about, um, you know, Nat Turner and the Rebellion. Um, which is great. When I first found out about... Um, Birth of a Nation. I was actually super excited because, you know, um, in the difference um, with all the slave narratives and, and um, slave movies that were given, it's rare where we see a movie about someone who actually started a rebellion, um, someone who was actually against the status quo, right, of the time. So um, when, I, when originally when I found out about it, I thought it was pretty cool. I was psyched. And then, you know, of course, the rape allegations came out. And that really did change um, whether I wanted to see it or not, just because it, it was interesting to me to watch him on these interviews um, and these discussions where he was live on public and, and he would never address um, the rape allegation at all. He wouldn't even really deny it, deny it at all, actually. I said really. He wouldn't deny it at all. Instead, he would just say, I really don't want to talk about that, or this is about the movie, not about me. So it's strange. You know, if someone is avoiding the question at hand, avoiding the situation, then you would think that maybe they had something to do with it, you know? And it's not just him, it's his co-director, right, as well. And of course, I had to read more into it because um, I'm not the one to jump on the bandwagon and just be like, they're just doing this because he's a black man because, you know, they probably are digging this up because he is a black man, you're right. Um, in comparison to white celebrities, white actors, who have been accused of rape, who actually have the, raped someone um, or have been a part of gender-based violence, they usually get away with it. Um, usually nothing happens to them in particular and they can continue these great careers and um, everything of that sort. So I have no doubt that that's probably, actually that is true. I'm not even gonna say that's probably true. But what's not race-related, what's not race-related is, you know, the fact that he, evidence shows he probably did rape or had something to do with the rape um, of that young woman. And so that part is wrong. You know, he should um, take some time out to deal with his own trauma of that incident and, and not just simply being on these interviews and saying, oh, well, God saved me, and that was a dark time in my life. That was a dark time, right? He says that, that was a dark time in his life. So that even shows more suspicion to the fact that he had a part in it or that he did it. So really, I personally don't want to see the movie anymore. <laughs> um, besides the fact of that, I've heard that there's a lot of fabrications um, in that movie that are not accurate to the actual story. There are some fabrications that I'm not sure um, pose as much as a threat as the main fabrication that I read in The Nation, which is like a news um, site um, or a news article site. And The Nation was talking about how um, in the movie he's making all the... Um, black women who are enslaved in the movie, kind of like docile, kind of like I need um, a male savior. Um, and then like, you know, like the women's are, the women are kind of like sacrifices uh, for the glory of the man. And huh, of course, right? Of course that'll happen. <laughs> uh, you, you have someone who, 
who possibly you have someone who possibly uh, committed a form of gender violence, right? Um, gender based violence. And, you know, of course, they would put more gender based violence that's fictional, that doesn't even happen in the actual narrative. Though they do say in the nation that his wife does get raped, but the way that they portray it in the movie is false. So there's a lot of false things in the movie, <laughs> like him killing his slave owner, him killing a, a slave catcher is apparently false, but I don't know if those false um, facts are as big as, you know, the glorification of the, the male hero in the movie, just because, you know, you could do different things with that. A lot of fictional movies are not exactly accurate um, for the sense of, like, owning up perhaps maybe an honor or a pride in the audience that's looking at it specifically. I'm imagining young black people, older black people, black people in general, who really want to see the movie. And it, it might want to, it might harbor the fact or, and add on to the fact that Nat Turner is a hero. So I don't really know about that fabrication. Um, it could be a beneficial fabrication. I don't know. You guys can tell me if anyone watches this, <laughs> but um, you know, there are some fabrications in it, um, but I think the main point for me not seeing the movie is, you know, his rape allegations, and just because in my life, I've never been raped before, but I, you know, I have, um, friends who have been raped before, um, I know plenty of cases, um, countrywide where people are raped, um, specifically we're talking about gender-based violence, women are raped and their rapists are not, they don't ever get punished for it, nothing happens, the case fails for some crazy reason that I, <laughs> I can't even figure out how it worked, but I find, I, I, I figure out these cases all the time. I see these cases all the time happen. And so what happens is, you know, the rapist is let free, even though they did rape that person. And then people are defending, defending these people, um, and shielding these people from getting any help because it's not just the victim that needs, that needs the counseling or whatever, you know, to heal from the trauma. It's also the rapist, right? It's also the person who committed the rape that needs that healing space and that time to, to really get themselves together. And usually that rapist doesn't do that because nobody's pressuring them into that, um, into doing that. And they're, they're almost provoking this idea that it was okay what they did by, you know, shielding the rapist and supporting the rapist, giving the rapist money. It's kind of strange. It's like if your dog, for instance, I mean, I know this, this might be a poor example, but if your dog like hops on your furniture and you don't want your dog to be on your furniture anymore and you spray the dog with some water, you know, you know, that the dog's not going to do it anymore. The dog's going to think about, maybe I shouldn't be hopping on this furniture. Well, you know, the same goes. Like, you're not going to pet the dog every time he hops on the furniture because then the dog is going to hop on the furniture more, you know? And it, and that can go with anything. You know, you don't learn and until people get you to learn. And that's, that's why rape culture is starting to... Um, mold so well into society because there are so many cases like this where people get off and then they're defended. Um, for instance, there's a lot of people who think Bill Cosby um, should be innocent and that doesn't really make much sense either because there's actual proof and he's admitted that he's did it, but people still want to see him as Mr. Huxtable and they, they still want to support him and, you know, you know, help him out because he is a black man. And I'm not saying, you know, this stuff is not being pulled up because these people are black. You're absolutely right. It is being pulled up because they are black, but they committed these crimes. And one other thing that I do want to talk about before I end this, because that's another thing to think about, you know, it's true, it was pulled up, but it's still wrong. You know, it doesn't change the fact that it's wrong and rape is wrong. Um, but another thing that I want to bring up is that everyone's saying, well, he didn't get in trouble for, um, for the rape, so he was innocent. We all know that's not true, right? I mean, look at Brock Turner, look at, there was this one rapist, he, um, 
He took advantage of a, a little boy. It was terrible. Trigger warning for that. Trigger warning for this whole video because I've said a few things. But, um, you know, and he didn't go to jail for it. So does that mean that he's innocent? No. I mean, we have, we're in a system that's flawed, right? We already know that, you know, there's a lot of things going on. So it's funny that the same people who complain about the same system that may, lets uh, um, George Zimmerman go free, that lets Eric Garner's killer go free on pay leave, they want to complain about that. But they don't complain when we talk about rape, when we talk about rapists getting free. They want to be like, oh, no, defend him because he's a black man but not taking into consideration that he's exploiting um, his masculinity, his um, his gender, so to speak, right? His gender, man, because he has power in that gender to get away with the crime. So this is something that I think everyone should think about before they see Birth of a Nation. Please don't just turn a blind eye. It is something that you should consider. I understand if you want to see it because, you know, like I said, it's a great narrative to go out there and be out there in the space, you know, cause we haven't seen a, a black uh, movie like that, but personally I won't be seeing it. And I think we should just wait because we have a whole bunch of different innovators out there who are making, who can make movies about um, Brent, Laura Brent, I think that's her name. No, Linda Brent, Linda Brent. Um, if you don't know about Linda Brent, she's amazing. She escaped slavery, too. She's a black woman. She escaped with her children. You know, someone could make a narrative about that. You don't know. You know, the world is shifting and, and we're creating new things. So I would just say it wouldn't be the end of the world if you didn't watch this film. And it's just something to think about in society. Like, you know, do we really want to keep supporting people who do need help? And do we want to keep supporting this behavior that they keep bringing to the spaces that we live in, to the spaces of entertainment? So yeah, that's my first video. You guys can tell me what you think um, below if you watch this. That's my thoughts on Nate Parker. So, yep, like, share, subscribe.